What is your why? Why do you do what you are doing? Whether it is the job you currently have, family, hobbies, other projects, what gives you meaning in what you do? The individual answer to that question is for many people the biggest motivation to do what they are doing. To give meaning to one's behavior, to your everyday actions, to your life in general, is like a primal human need. Success is often the goal all of these individual actions are leading up to. It is where you want to end up with your various journeys. That is why I like to refer to success as your where to. The question, what is your why, is always connected with the question, what is your where to. Let me give you an example. When I was 12 years old, I lived in the village close by. I lived in Brienz. And almost every single week, I would watch the uh, Champions League football games together with my three older brothers and with my father. I wanted so much to be like not only my brothers and my father, but also like the football players on TV. And I played football myself. Until one day, when winter came, I tried out a new sport called handball. It was a whole new world to me, and I had no idea where I stood. So eager as I was, already after two weeks of practice, I would summon all of my courage, would go up to Coach Sella and ask him, Sella, what do you think? How far can I get as a handball player? What I hoped for, he would say, was, Victor, I think you can become a handball superstar. What he actually said was, Victor, I think you're going to be quite tall. <laughs> and we need tall players, so why don't you come back next week and we keep practicing? A bit sobering, isn't it? But why did I want to play handball when I was 12? To be entirely honest, I thought maybe one day, as a sportsman, I could make a lot of money. Maybe there would even be fans cheering for me. Maybe I could even make it on TV, like those guys I used to watch. So you see that my why, how far can I get, was connected with my definition of success, with my where to. The question, or the search for an answer to this question, what is your why? And the search for an answer to this question, how far can I get, would stay my why in almost everything I do, still today. But my definition of success would soon change drastically. How, you ask? By adding how. This was my game changer. I remember as a teenager, right after high school, reading in a book I got from my oldest brother Nick about the two philosophical concepts of teleology and deontology. Telos is Greek and means end, aim, goal. According to teleology, all of your actions and developments are goal-oriented. They are oriented on your where to. Very simply put, an action is only value-driven or valuable if the consequences are good. Up to this point, I myself was very much focused on my goals, on my telos, on my where to. But then I learned about this other concept, deontology. Deon is Greek and means what is required, what is your duty. According to deontology, you are obliged to focus on the how. It focuses on the action itself. So, basically, you can do the right thing regardless of the consequences. 
How you do something defines the true value of your actions. I was mind blown. In sports, this would mean that it was not primarily about winning the game, but about how you want to win the game. In business, this would mean that it was not primarily about reaching those key performance indicator KPI goals, but about how you want to reach those goals. Just as I learned that the why you want to get there was connected to the where to, I found out that the how to get there was just as important. For me, it is not the why or the how or the where to. It is the combination of all three that allowed me to reach my goals and allowed me to feel successful. What does all of this additional focus on the how have to do with your personal freedom? Firstly, you will be able to put much more emphasis on and much more energy into the things you yourself can do to reach your goals. How value-driven you are is very little influenced by external factors, factors that are out of your control. So it is up to you. And secondly, by focusing more on the how, this will have an impact on how success feels. It allows you to realize how little the consequences of your actions will have to say about how you're thinking about yourself being successful or not. Trust me, it will be a magically freeing experience to realize that you can feel successful no matter the consequences. Because the consequences will be simple. They will be the best possible you could achieve under these circumstances. In sports, for example, anything unforeseen can happen. I've, I've seen it all, almost. Uh, uh, you can break a leg a week before you would sign your first pro contract. You're not getting signed. The opposing team signs a star player days before the decisive game and you don't win the game. Or the team you play for goes bankrupt and you don't know where to train or who to play for next season. Same goes for business. A uh, pandemic happens and all of your business plans go down the drain. Political conflicts have an influ influence on the oil price and, for example, your transport company is no longer profitable or you really, really want this sponsorship deal to happen, and even though you gave it your best to close the deal, you just don't make it. Listen to that last sentence again. Even though you gave it your best, you just don't make it. It is about putting more focus on giving it your best. It is about putting more focus on the how, in addition to your why and your where to, where to do you want to go? What should be the consequences of your actions? Of course you want to win the game. Of course you want to close the sponsorship deal. But where should your focus mainly be? On the how. How would you like to be as a player? Would you go out there on court, have some fun, see what happens and try your luck? Could you really look into the mirror and say, I gave it my best? Just the moment I started uh, focusing more on the how, it was like I added a third energy source to everything I did. Not only did I want to work on my why that gave me meaning and on my where to that gave me constant, often measurable goals that would pull me further, always further, I wanted to start working on my values. I wanted to start working on my how. It was the one thing that would change the way I looked at success. And that would give me a lot of personal freedom. So I started defining the values I wanted to base my actions on. For example, I said, and I hope you feel it, whatever I do, I do it passionately. Whatever I do, I do it wholeheartedly. And I want to be kind while doing it. I want to be a kind sportsman. Maybe not the last 60 seconds of the game, but right after it, with everybody, especially the opponent. Or I wanted to be a kind student. I wanted to share knowledge, not keeping it for myself. 
I want to be fair in business, truly look for a win-win opportunity and not for my own company's biggest profit. Or I want to appreciate the ones dearest to me, truly listen to them, not only being listened to. And slowly but steadily, I realized how little the reaching of my goals would have to say about how satisfied I would go to bed at night. I hold myself accountable. No, I define my successfulness based on how I acted that day. And this gave me a whole bunch of personal freedom. The what is your why helps you find meaning. The what is your where to shows you where the journey might end. But it is, as they say, the journey itself and how you travel it is the real goal. Knowing this, there is only one question remaining. What is your how? Thank you.